Even with controversies making juicy headlines and the industry struggling to establish credibility, real estate stocks did find a few takers in 2012. Top line and bottom line numbers of developers with little past baggage actually showed a healthy uptrend. But the heavyweights continue to struggle under debt loads. Ashutosh Sharma, NDTV Sharpers Research Mind, who tracks these stocks closely, sums up 2012 for real estate stocks and also gives you the gems in the industry you could watch out for as 2013 unfolds. The year 2012 can be rightfully called as a revival year for real estate stocks. Neglected, overlooked and seen as high on corporate governance deficit, Realty Index which underperformed the Nifty with negative 82% returns compared to Nifty's 1% during the preceding 5 years, came back strongly in 2012 and outperformed the benchmark by a wide margin. The resurgence seen here can be attributed to two factors, depressed valuations and under ownership. Analysts have started turning bullish on real estate. Many have started placing buy recommendations on real estate stocks after several quarters. A recent report by JP Morgan recommended investors buying Overall Realty, Sobha Developers and Phoenix Mills. According to JP Morgan analysts Saurabh Kumar and Gunjan Prithiyani, improving macro sentiment, expectations of monetary easing and positive news flow on new launches bode well for the sector performance. Uh, yes, we have been overall positive on the real estate pack and if this whole uh, interest rate scenario which has been on the elevated side over the last uh, many, many months, if uh, the interest rate regime is likely to soften, then we do have positive coverage on stocks like Shobha Developer, uh, Gojit Properties, Mahindra Life Space, Ubra Reality. Our uh, concentration is more on the companies in the real estate side which has uh, very less leverage on the balance sheet. Execution has to be good and uh, realization per square feet has to be uh, above the uh, industry standard. So we are quite optimistic about all these four names in the real estate pack. My three uh, top stock uh, picks in the real estate sector would be uh, Shobha Developers, uh, Peninsula Land and Phoenix Mills. I think Shobha Developers is operating in a space which is, uh, you know, the real estate more in Bangalore and in the southern part of India. We've seen some amount of uh, improved demand from that segment and also I've seen Shobha Developers bring down its debt significantly. Uh, going ahead with interest rates, you know, uh, softening a bit, I think the real estate space, especially in the residential side, should do well for Shobha. Uh, as far as peninsula land is concerned, most of its land blocks are in and around Bombay. It has started a few new projects based on land which was acquired four or five years back, which have seen good demand. I think going forward, since they have a fairly strong balance sheet, you would see significant improvement in uh, the financials of Peninsula Land. However, this revival has not been on sheer froth, but on strong turnaround in ground realities. Recent new launches across key markets have seen a strong response, with projects being sold out in few weeks, sometimes even few days. Key projects that have been sold out within days of launch include Godrej Summit, Tara Housing Project in Gurgaon, DB Realties, LNT and Godrej in Mumbai and Phoenix Sobha Prestigious Projects in Bangalore. Purvankar Projects, a well-known player in Karnataka, saw a bumper response to residential township project named Provident Sunworth. While project launches remain robust, coupled with improved realizations, Listed players such as DLF were busy pruning their debt by selling non-core assets. In December, DLF announced the sale of its Amman Resorts properties along with NTC Mill Land in Mumbai to effectively reduce its debt to about 20,000 crores. However, leverage still remains a key issue for most developers with the sector average hovering around 0.5 to 1 time. Total real estate bad loans, net of provisions of all commercial banks rose 55% last year to about 65,000 odd crores from about 41,700 crores on March 31st, 2011. The Reserve Bank of India is expected to cut interest rates in Jan of next year, consequently providing a boost to affordability as well as to demand for real estate companies. It also in turn would help to address the rising interest cost for most of the real estate companies and in turn also providing a bit of a comfort as far as return ratios and earnings are concerned. One can only hope 
that the real estate stocks continue to do well provided they are able to manage their debt effectively. In New Delhi, this is Ashutosh Sharma for NDTV Profit. When it comes to real estate companies clawing back into the good books of investors or building credibility with a customer, all hopes are pinned on the next generation. We capture the views of some of India's youngest and brightest real estate professionals.